about, again, lattices. So the second talk in this session is implementing ring LWU-based schemes using an RSA co-processor. The speaker is Fernando Vride with on joint work with Martin Albrecht, Christian Hanse, Andrea Höller, Thomas Pöppelmann, and Andreas Wallner, and the stage is yours. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, can you all hear me? I'll take it as a yes. Um, so um, this is work on um, trying to do lattice schemes on hardware uh, that is currently available. So uh, the talk before was about uh, how to do very fast MTTs, but uh, that requires some hardware design. So uh, we look at uh, alternatives for uh, deploying lattice-based crypto. So uh, an overview. Um, We'll uh, do the obligatory slide on post-quantum crypto and then talk a, a little bit about deploying crypto. Um, and then we get to the, to the main dish, which is uh, the ring arithmetic and how can we make it work using RSA coprocessors. Um, and then we'll uh, look at an implementation of a scheme and uh, at some future directions. So uh, I think some in the room already heard about this, but uh, Shor came up with a, a quantum algorithm for uh, allowing factoring and discrete locks and this means that uh, much of the currently deployed public key crypto um, may not be viable in the mid to long term future. Um, so NIST started a standardization process and um, they are looking at um, a many different schemes based on different algebraic assumptions and a very common one is uh, our assumptions over polynomial rings. So ring LWE based assumptions or, or n true uh, based assumptions. Now, in practice, uh, cryptographic schemes have uh, two crucial requirements. Uh, well, maybe three. They should be secure, first of all. But um, then they should have a, if, if we want to actually deploy them and we want to actually do crypto rather than just talk crypto, we need them to be performant and we need them to be easy to deploy. Uh, so, of, of course, optimized implementations are a very active uh, area of research. So as part of the NIST process, uh, this work is... Uh, was published during the first round, so there have been some changes in strategy maybe since. But as part of the NIST process, uh, teams were required to provide a reference implementation and then strongly advised to provide an optimized implementation with a particular focus on modern CPUs. Um, since, there's been a lot of work also on FPGAs and ASICs, uh, and there's been also some work in general on the direction of constrained and embedded devices. So, for example, microcontrollers, uh, HSMs, uh, or smart cards. Uh, so if we look at the current smart card uh, environment, for example, um, we're often dealing with a low power 16-bit or 32-bit CPU um, with very tiny amounts of RAM. And um, these are augmented usually with some specific coprocessor to enable them to run public key cryptography because the CPU is, so, uh, is, is not very fast and so maybe modular exponentiation can be quite expensive. And so usually... Um, if we look, for example, as the smart card that we will uh, we focus on this work, it's part of the SLE78 family from Infineon, and um, it provides a 16-bit CPU uh, clocked at 50 me uh, megahertz, and it has uh, 16 kilobytes of RAM, 500 kilobytes of non-volatile memory, and then it comes with an AES and a SHA-256 coprocessors, and, uh, and then it comes with uh, what we call the RSA coprocessor, which is um, this coprocessor for uh, adding and, um, and multiplying mod ZN where n is about 2,200 bits. And so I guess the, the obvious application of this would be to do RSA 2048. So what we were thinking about is, okay, in this current, uh, currently available uh, smart card context, what would it take to run ideal lattice-based cryptography? So the uh, main operation, maybe one of the, the, most, the most expensive operation in, uh, in Ringel W-based schemes is the MULAD operation. And so here we have uh, A, B, and C. These are um, polynomials modulo Q and modulo some other polynomial F, uh, which is often, for example, X to the N plus one, where N is some power of two. Now, schoolbook multiplication is quite slow. So uh, usually what, what many schemes propose is to uh, use the number theoretic transform to perform the multiplication. In the embedded hardware system, there's been a lot of work to design um, coprocessors for Ring LWE. And often a central component is a design for this uh, entity on hardware directly, so that one can provide a sort of entity coprocessor. Uh, the issue with this is that uh, new hardware design requires that in implementing and testing and certifying uh, across countries and then deploying. And only recently, for example, we started having ECC crypto on smart cards. And so the idea of uh, having post-quantum crypto on smart cards might seem a little bit far in the future. And also there is the issue that since the 
competition is still going to run for a few years, most likely. There is no obvious candidate that is going to be what gets actually deployed. And so there might be some lack of incentive for companies producing smart card chips to actually start doing all this process when maybe they come out that they have the, the wrong size uh, hardware coprocessor. So our approach, our alternative approach is the following. We try to build a flexible MULAD um, coprocessor or gadget by reusing the RSA coprocessor that is already available on the smart card. And we demonstrate it by taking uh, Kyber as it was parametrized in the first round. There were some changes since. And um, we make a variant of Kyber CCA. Uh, we'll see how it differs. Um, first of all, it doesn't use the NTT, and so uh, there are some, some incompatibilities in, in API. Um, and we run it on this SLE 78 platform. And we argue that we run it in a viable way, so that uh, this technique could be a possible way of transitioning into uh, post-quantum crypto while the new hardware coprocessors are still being designed. The main ingredient of all of this is the uh, Kronecker substitution technique. So it's a classic technique in, uh, in computer algebra for reducing uh, integer polynomials with uh, multiplication of polynomials with integer coefficients to just plain integer multiplication. And uh, so to scare everybody with some maths, uh, we have two columns here that are running more or less the same operation. So say on the left we have A times B, and there are two polynomials, and so we can just have compute A times B by, for example, school book multiplication. And then on the right, we take A and B, and we evaluate it at 100. And so we get two integers, 102 and 304, and we just multiply these two integers, we get 32,008, and then we write the result in base 100. And uh, what we can notice is that uh, the coefficients here in base 100 translate to the coefficients from the resulting polynomial. And the reason this works is because 100 is a large enough number that when we start multiplying uh, in school book manner, so 4 times 2, 4 times x, et cetera, is the same as multiplying the two integers. And uh, the possible carries of integer multiplication are going to be uh, small enough that they won't, they won't overflow from one digit to the other. And this can be also done with uh, sign coefficients. And this can also be done in a, in, with uh, small little integers. Uh, there are a few techniques that we use and that we discuss more in detail in the paper. Uh, but they're a bit uh, tricky for a presentation, maybe. Now, this also works, uh, this technique, uh, with modular reductions modulo f. So here we have A, which has been relabeled to be the result of the previous operation, is uh, quadratic. And we have F, our cyclotomic polynomial, x to the n plus 1. And we want to reduce A mod F. And so what we're doing really is we're taking an appropriate multiple of F and removing it so that the highest uh, power of the resulting polynomial is less than the degree of F. And now if instead we're to evaluate on the right A and F on a, a hundred, and then we were to reduce A mod F as an, just a an classical integer modular reduction. What we're doing there is also we're trying to remove some multiple of big F, which is 100 squared plus 1, such that the result is smaller than F. And this can be seen also like as a parallel operation between, between the two techniques. And we can see that actually the result is 1,005, which is just uh, 10x plus 5 if we write it out in base 100. So now that we have these two techniques, uh, we can try to combine them. And, uh, and so we can use them to compute the MULAD operation. So we had A times B plus C as polynomials, mod Q and mod F. And uh, we can choose T, some base that is large enough. And we're going to choose a power of 2 for efficiency reasons, of course. And then we can compute A and B and C. We can evaluate them at T. And we can also evaluate F at T. And then do the operation over the integers directly. Do A times B plus C mod F over the integers. Um, and then uh, what we can do is, well, okay, then this is more or less like working on Z of F of T using the RSA coprocessor. So if before we had big N as the RSA modulo, now we're just using F of T. Uh, this is going to result in a polynomial that is equivalent mod Q to our result when we, once we unpack all the coefficients. And, um, and so, yes, after we do this operation, there's still going to be some modular reductions to do on each, co co on each coefficient of the resulting polynomial. So now the question is, how do we choose T such that we can actually do all of this, right? And uh, so in the paper, we provide a, a lower bound um, and, and a proof of why this works for our, uh, for our algorithm for doing this. And so, okay, let's just plug in Kyber. Uh, we have um, polynomials of degree 256 and uh, in some other properties of the scheme, again, as presented in round one. 
uh, and it comes out that t should be 2 to the l and l should be larger than 24.5 and so we just choose for example 25. Okay, cool. Uh, so it seems like we're done. Okay, so what's gonna be the modulo that we have? Oh, it's log two of f of t. It's gonna be 6,400 bits long, more or less. Now we have a problem. Our coprocessor on this smart card was for RS, more or less designed for RSA 2048, and in particular doesn't take uh, integers that are longer than 2,200 bits. So it seems that uh, Kronecker substitution alone would, won't cut it. Um, but luckily, we can maybe try to interpolate. So we went from full polynomial multiplications to full integer multiplication. But maybe there is somewhere in the middle. Um, and indeed, this, is, this idea has been explored before by, for example, Schoenhagen and Nussbaumer, and uh, there's been multiple tricks in the literature similar to this. And so the idea is the following. Say that we have here a polynomial of degree less than six, and we have, um, we can split it sort of into the even powers and the odd powers. And the odd powers are sort of shifted, shifted by an x. And then we add this uh, dummy variable y, which is, uh, stands in for x squared. And so what we have is a0 plus a2x squared, but it becomes a y, and so on. And here, a1 times x, and a3 times y, x squared times x, and so on. So we can sort of write the same polynomial in this way. And now, um, what we can do is we can use Kronecker substitution on these y polynomials that are smaller, of a smaller degree, but I'll have many of the same properties as the polynomial before. And this might fit actually in the coprocessor. And then we can just uh, have a low degree polynomial in X with large coefficients. And we can use, for example, uh, a Karatsuba, or we could use a school book, or we could use Tumkuk, or some other uh, efficient um, polynomial multiplication technique um, to, to run the operation. And then at the end, there's gonna be some tidying up to do at, at the end of this operation that we describe in the paper, uh, but it's just fiddling a little bit with some extra uh, modular reductions, but nothing, nothing too, too worrying. And so in this case, case, for example, using this technique, what we can do is we can take the polynomials uh, to the 256 for Kyber and sort of reduce our operations to multiplications of polynomials uh, of degree 64 in Y um, and degree five in X uh, using Karatsuba. So we did all this work and we have this sort of flexible MULAT um, gadget because we could also use it, like we can sort of split and interpolate and see different strategies. Is it worth it? Um, so round one Kyber makes use of Ketchak for uh, many of its pseudo random functions for the random oracles in the CCA transform and so on. And uh, the SLE 78 doesn't currently have a Ketchak hardware coprocessor and so using Ketchak in software is extremely slow and is actually, uh, would make this completely useless. So what we did is we circumvented this problem by defining our all random functions based on the AES and the SHA-256 coprocessor um, and then use those instead. And we noticed that in round two, uh, Kyber indeed introduced a new variant called Kyber 90s that more or less does something similar and tries to uh, use this uh, AS and, and SHA-256 as origin for the random oracles in order to make uh, uh, speed measurements and not depend on the shuttering implementations. So here are some numbers. Uh, the table is much larger and much scarier on the paper. Uh, but here what we're looking at are implementations only on the same SLE uh, platform to make comparison as easy as possible. The first two lines are our work. So this is the Kyber CPA encryption scheme that is uh, used to construct the CCA chem. And we have timings for, uh, inside, well, we have cycles for key generation, encryption, and decryption. And in particular, if uh, ballpark figure, these numbers here are more or less 130 milliseconds. We report them more precisely on the paper, but uh, that's what six million cycles more or less translates into. Then we have RSA, and we have just plain RSA, or RSA using the Chinese remainder theorem, which is really how you want to compute this. Uh, funny enough, they don't propose uh, numbers for uh, the key generation in the spec, but they have very fast encryption, of course. RSA has a small uh, exponent. But then if we look at the decryption numbers, we have that, um, for example, we have for the fastest RSA, version, we have decryption taking more or less six million cycles, which is more or less what it takes us to do the same operation. And so it seems that actually if on an RSA uh, smart card, we can be more or less as fast as RSA. Of course, uh, this is, uh, you know, it's always comparison that are a bit difficult because this RSA contains some security, extra security measures that our work doesn't contain. 
but still it looks like ballpark figures are, are similar. And then we have a CPA implementation of Kyber, so it should be compared to the first line, and it's just Kyber and software, and it's definitely losing all around, and then we have also a New Hope implementation that also uses the AES coprocessor, but it's still uh, much slower. So um, future work, um, we could investigate other schemes. So three bears, for example, is in round two, uh, uses only integers and uses a base idea, a similar idea, but from the ground. Uh, their integers don't fit on the SLE78 uh, uh, coprocessor that we had available, but so there should be, we should probably do some more algebra tricks, but it could be interesting to investigate that. And they may also fit on a larger coprocessor. Uh, Saber instead is a design very similar to Kyber, but what they do is they use rounding noise, so there is less AS cycles to run to generate uh, the, to run the scheme, and also uses a power of two Q, so all those um, modulo Q reductions that have to be done after we unpack the result, those can be made much faster. And then maybe there could be room for designing a scheme that fits exactly into our coprocessor so that, uh, um, you know, we don't have to do the Nussbaumer tricks, and then, of course, we could look at implementing some, some signature scheme, like, say, the lithium. Um, the issue there is that Q is much larger, and so probably it would be a kind of different design challenge. And then a final idea is the fact that LWE, by its own nature, supports errors, supports sort of adding errors. So maybe what we could do is, we had the number before that said that Kyber needed 25, uh, L to be 25 bits, and so we had to pack everything at least every 2 to the 25, um, but it would be very nice if it were 24, because 24 is byte aligned, of course. And indeed, in our case, we do need 25, but we end up using 32, because the byte alignment is so powerful. And so maybe there is some way of bounding the carry errors, or the probability that a carry introduces a, a, a full decryption error, and so maybe there could be some way of designing this sort of like noise, even more noisy LWE-based scheme uh, that just uses 24 bits uh, coefficients instead of 25. But of course, it's a little bit tricky, so yeah, it's left for future work. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? Again, the microphone's up front here. Oh, uh, there is a question. What? Oh, I don't I think this is our next speaker. Oh. Okay. Um, so you're looking into RSA coprocessors. If you would have like a little to curve smart card, then those numbers are much, much smaller. So how much overhead would that introduce? I mean, you you kind of bouncing between the different representation would have much more of the Nussbaumer. Yeah, so um, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure of the numbers. I think that maybe a strategy, of course, could be to Maybe it's like the coprocessor is too small for Kyber, but maybe one could use a smaller, uh, a higher rank module and a smaller degree polynomial, and that maybe could be a way. But mm -hmm. I mean, without, without sitting down on Python and making some yeah. computations, that it's hard to tell, but maybe using 128 degree polynomials could help. And the second question you mentioned, I mean, you were motivating your research as like, this is the kind of easy or cheap way to get some idea of how fast it would be if it was built in hardware. So much overhead is there over a dedicated Kyber processor. Like if somebody would build this thing, how much would go away of, of your complexity? I mean, certainly it would be slower than having a proper entity coprocessor, no question. I mm -hmm. think it's rather, the point is rather, currently without having to redesign the hardware, just having similar, we compare to current cryptography and say like, okay, well, we could be much faster probably with an entity coprocessor, but we're, we could also be not much slower than with a, that RSA on the RSA smart card. So it's rather like for the transition period than for the long term as a solution. All right. There are no further questions, and please join me in thanking the speaker again.